I think then what we would do is you'd send me all that, I'd browse through it, and then maybe next time when we meet, not only would we film. Moving very slowly, but I think we're getting there. Okay, so I think we are set up here going live. So welcome everybody. Thank you so much for joining us and thank you for logging into our webinar. My name is Ted Blank and I am one of the travel advisors here at Travel Leaders in the Twin Cities. And we're very glad to have you and we're very excited to go explore um, a couple of the rivers of Europe, the Rhine, the Main, and the Moselle with our friend Mary Margaret from Ama Waterways. So, Mary Margaret, I'm gonna turn the presentation over to you and please take it away. Well, thank you so much, Ted, I appreciate it. And yes, welcome. Um, yeah, we are going to talk about the beautiful Rhine, Main, and Moselle rivers uh, and the history and some of the beautiful places that you will visit as you travel on these rivers, all right? So let's get kind of started here. Um, again, pictures say, I think a thousand words. Um, you know, the Rhine has many, many castles. Um, you're looking at the, the Main River, the, uh, you look at the Moselle is known for its vineyards and its beautiful wines that it has. And I'll talk a little bit about the wines on the Moselle because the Moselle was, when I last time I was on it several years ago, um, I was quite surprised at the Rieslings that the, that the Moselle produces. So again, let's Look at the beautiful pictures and let's get start dreaming about where you would like to go and where you would like to be in the next few months, all right? I show you this because you you should know that all the um, ships on your right-hand side of the screen are ours. We own them, they're paid for. We, uh, we have no debt, as Rudy's quote states. We, the last 10 ships that we've put in the water, and that includes Yama Siena, which is in the water, uh, being retrofitted for her journeys uh, this year, as well as the Amalucia, uh, the Amadilia, who is also in Egypt in the water, uh, being prepared for her first sailing in September of this year, uh, are all paid for in cash, right? So again, and I want to point out, besides those ships, those three ships that we we are, are, are ours that are being put in the water this year. I mean, the Amasiena was supposed to be put in last year, but you know, so this year. Um, look at the Amabella and the Amaverte. It says 2010, 2020. Well, they last year during COVID, what our owners decided to do is is refurbish them completely. So the Amabella I have I was on in 2012, and I have to tell you that ship was beautiful then, and I've been told the way they have refurbished it is absolutely gorgeous. So that's why I put the two dates there, so you know that it's um, it's like a brand new ship, both of them, the Amabella and the Amaverte. So I would like you to meet our owners, and they are hands on owners. They don't sit in the white ivory tower telling everybody what to do. You know, they visit our ships unannounced, right? And they are right there with us doing webinars like I am right now, right? Rudy Schneider, our, one of our co-founders, our president, but he's also known as the godfather of river cruising, but he's our architect as well. So he designs all of our ships. Christine Karnst, 
one of our other co-founders and executive vice president. Jimmy Murphy was the third of what I like to say, the three musketeers in a sense. Um, he was one of the founding fathers and unfortunately Jimmy did pass away in 2014, but we are so fortunate to have his son Gary as one of our co-owners and our senior vice president of sales. So we welcome you into our AMA family. So this is the Rhine, the Mine, and the Moselle. Um, as I mentioned to you, um, Rudy Schneider, our godfather of river cruising, well, he, he has known that river cruising was going to explode since the early 90s, actually the late 80s, because the Rhine man, mine, Danube Canal, was finished in 1992. And that opened up the waterways as we know it today. All right, and he foresee that he foresaw that the, the the beauty of river cruising for us in, in the United States. So and these are some of the beautiful cities that you will visit on these three rivers, and a lot of them will connect. So if you're traveling on the Rhine, you may touch on the Moselle. Right? If you're traveling on the Moselle, of course you may touch on the Rhine as well, vice versa. So let's get started. And look at all the beautiful countries that you're going to visit. You know, the Netherlands, Belgium, France, Germany. All right, I mean, just gorgeous places. So we are on the Rhine. And as you can see, you will spend, as we are going through the Rhine Gorge, two to two and a half hours getting a lecture from your cruise manager on the castles, on the, on the history that is on the Rhine and in the Rhine Gorge. And did you know that the Rhine Gorge is also a, a UNESCO World Heritage Site? So, well, let's start. We can embark, as we're on the Rhine, we can embark in Amsterdam or we can disembark in Amsterdam, depending upon where you, where you start, Basel, or Amsterdam, okay? Now, Amsterdam, beautiful, beautiful city. If you're going to embark here, if you're gonna land in Amsterdam, I sincerely hope that you might spend a few extra days there because there are so many beautiful museums, the Anne Frank Museum for one, right? Uh, you've got the Van Gogh Museum. And also you've got the Heidelberg, <laughs> Heidelberg. Well, not the Heidelberg, I'm sorry, the Heineken. I'm sorry, I'm not a beer drinker. Heineken, Heineken Museum, which is a lot of fun. And actually my husband and I did that. And I became an official, I got my certificate also, um, beer pourer. I learned how to pour beer. So, but with AMA Waterways, if you choose a pre-trip, right? With us in Amsterdam or wherever it happens to be, you will be taken from the airport to your hotel you will meet your cruise manager there, all right? And your cruise manager will have like a welcome cocktail party. We will have some beautiful tours that are all included, all right? So you'll have a, a, maybe a, a walking tour of the city. You'll have, and if you get there in 2022, you'll also get the chance to go to the Florian, all right? Now, and Mary Margaret, we should explain that the Floriad is this once in a ah, decade yes. flower expo that brings together sort of the best of Dutch horticulture with some Dutch food. And it happens once every 10 years and it's gonna happen in 2022. Yes, and it starts April 9th, April 14th, I'm sorry, and closes October 9th. I get those dates always mixed up, I'm so sorry. Um, and then your cruise manager will take you to your ship and be with you for those seven nights on the ship. And then if you choose to do a post and you'll have some choices, you can do Lucerne and, and Zurich, or you could do Lake Como if, as you disembark in Basel, right? And, but your cruise manager will be with you. That is an AMA Waterways exclusive. You have one contact, one cruise manager, not several. And it really makes for a seamless experience, sort of from the moment you arrive in your hotel in Amsterdam, you know, at the beginning of your cruise till the moment you leave for the airport on your last day when you return home. Thank you. And then we head to Cologne. And again, another 
UNESCO World Heritage Site is the cathedral in Cologne. And when we arrive in Cologne and where we dock actually in Cologne, you have some choices. You can go off on your own to a wonderful chocolate factory. I call it the Willy Wonka chocolate factory. Or you could do a bike tour. You could do a walking tour. You could do a culinary tour in Cologne. And on all of our stops, please remember that every time we stop, you will be given choices, not options. Choices are free, options cost you money. So we include all the tours. And with your culinary tour, we go into this um, restaurant. It's actually, it reminds me of a huge um, Oktoberfest beer hall, really. Uh, and we have Quoche beer, apple pan, um, potato pancakes, and applesauce that you'll be tasting. All right. So again, cologne, beautiful cologne. And then, of course, we've got the Rhine Gorge that you'll be sailing. And depending upon the nautical times, we'll either be doing it in the morning or in the afternoon. And I can guarantee you, no matter when we are doing it, you'll be served Rudersheim coffee. And that you can have the opportunity of tasting not only on our ship, but you can learn how to make it at home in Rudersheim. Again, the castles, you know, the Langstein Castle. This is also an exclusive on the waterways on the Rhine where we visit this castle. You will have the opportunity to have a wine tasting, some culinary experiences here and meet the owners of these, this beautiful castle. Quite, it's quite unique, it truly is. Um, it's quite a hike up there, but it's, uh, and you have, and we actually entertain you while you're up there. And as I said, Rudersheim Coffee, we're in Rudersheim, beautiful wine country along the Rhine. You have choices with, in Rudersheim. One, you could do the Siegfried Mechanical Museum and don't laugh because that museum is unbelievable. It's privately owned. It has music boxes from the Egyptian days, right? Um, we have, and people think about, oh, I, well, do I really want to do this? They go there. They are so fascinated with it. So, it, it, or you could do a gondola ride, depending upon the season that you're visiting us, uh, or just you go into the wine cellar and you'll meet those owners. You'll do some wine tasting, or you could do Rudersheim coffee and learn how to make that, which is quite, and that's actually served in that mug, all right, that type of coffee cup. It is coffee, a brandy. Of course, it's lit right in front of you. It's a beautiful presentation. Whipped cream and, of course, chocolate. It's delicious. Okay. And yes, they do have decaf, in case you want decaf. And then you'll have some choices again. You'll have we can't, we don't sail into Heidelberg, all right? So you have to choose between Heidelberg or Sphere. In Heidelberg, if you're there, you have the Philosopher's Hike because we do offer hiking excursions. The Heidelberg Castle, as you see on your left, a regular walking tour of Heidelberg itself. Or we also give you the choice of Sphere. And Sphere has the, the only Romanesque cathedral in Europe. Right? It's beautiful. And, but this happens to be the cathedral in um, Heidelberg. And then, of course, we go into Basel. There's other cities along the way, but I could be here. I could be talking to you until probably three o'clock in the afternoon about all the beautiful places that we do stop at, at along the Rhine River, you know, Strasbourg. Alsace region of France. It is now France. It used to be Germany, then it became France, and then it became Germany again, but now it's France, and it's a beautiful region out on the Rhine, right? I can talk forever on this. One of my favorite itineraries. And now this is the Main River, all right? Again, different, look at the different, there's a difference, but yet there's similarities. So let's do the mine. And the mine, you start in Nuremberg. 
where you have the mind dandelion, and you do go through the mind dandelion canal where you will hit Von Burke. And the mind dandelion canal is quite a feat. Let me tell you, you will be on the sun deck or on the open area uh, in the front of the ship, um, looking as we could travel through the mind dandelion canal. Um, you'll go into Wurstburg and Broughton. You know, you'll have some beautiful opportunities to do wine tasting. You'll have some um, bike tours, culinary experiences, and of course you've got the walking tours. And with our walking tours, you are given choices. You could be part of our gentle walkers and they walk just a little bit slower, okay? My regular walkers, or what I like to say is my power walkers because what they wanna do is just go through the tour and then either they wanna go shop or they wanna do something else in that particular city, town, or village that we're in, all right? So let's start in Nuremberg. So in Nuremberg, you, we do give you a city tour. We do go by the place where the trials were held. Yeah. Um, and you do have some opportunities to see some of the other places that, uh, you know, of course, during World War II, you know, the Nazis occupied uh, in the war in the Nuremberg area. Now, if you happen to be going at Christmas market time, you will experience probably the largest Christmas market in Europe. It's absolutely spectacular. And then, of course, we hit Bamberg. And I love Bamberg because of its cafes. Uh, yeah, sitting there having a cup of coffee with a, with a, with a, a, you know, a, you know, a pastry. A, you know, it's just amazing. Just the people watch and to see all the, the beautiful architecture that's there. And of course in Bomberg, if you're a beer drinker, you've loved the smoked beer. I did taste it. You know, my husband's a beer drinker, so I did I did have a taste. It is definitely smoke beer, right? But it's good, right? And of course, you've got the pretzels. I love the pretzels. And then we go into Wurstburg. And this, I want to tell you, is we go up to the the the, uh, the, the palace up there we, where we are entertained, and you will do some wine tasting if you so desire. Now, now, when I say wine tasting, it's the experience of going there and listening to the owners of the vineyards or the, the what the wines are all about in the region. You don't have to taste it if, you're, if you're, you don't drink. I mean, I don't mean to sound like you have to do all this. It's up to you, but it's nice to listen to all the differences of the regions. Right? But what's also interesting and what's fun to do is you see the, the, the white building over there and, the, and the, those are actually wine shops and um, kind of wine cellars. People, what they do in, in, in this beautiful city is they buy a bottle of wine and you know, plastic glasses. They sit on the bridge and drink their wine and maybe some cheese or some sausage and, and, and people watch. It's really, it, if it's quite unique and it's a lot of fun. And then of course the, the, the residents. We do get a, a, a tour of that. And the, you know, just to kind of look at the gardens. So we are on castles. And I'm, I'm sorry, I can't, I, I'm, my, my mind is not, I don't remember what the name of this castle is. I apologize. <laughs> and now we're on the Moselle. I think the Moselle is one of the most beautiful rivers. And as you can see, all the, the vineyards, it is, sunny and that's why they have such beautiful Rieslands. Right? The Rieslands come from the Moselle region of, um, of Europe. Right? And to kind of take a look at what you, you, you will be traveling and what cities that you will be touching. Right? You've got Trier, 
you've got Koko, Koblenz, right? Um, beautiful areas. And you know, we offer uh, itineraries that do all three of these rivers, you know, the, the Rhine, the Main, and the Danube. You know, there's, and, and there's something to be said about that because you wanna see all these cities and have the opportunity to go into Bersch, right? Go into Strasbourg area, you know, those, if they're beautiful, beautiful cities. Lots of history. Again, as we travel on the Moselle, these are all, and every time I'm on the Moselle, I have to tell you, I, I kind of look up and, and see all the vineyards and I say, how in the world do they possibly pick those grapes? Because they're so steep. And because they pick them by hand, believe it or not. You know, on the Moselle in particular, it's kind of one of those hiding in plain sight destinations. Yes. It's so beautiful. It's, it's got that beautiful scenery and the great wine and the historic cities, but it's far, far more of an off the beaten path destination than the Rhine. It's, yes. It makes a nice change from sort of the big and bustling cities of the Rhine to some of the smaller, more intimate cities you can discover on the Rhine or on the, on the Moselle. Yes. And this happens to be Trier. And it does have the Roman influence, right? And in Trier, it's, it's a lovely little city where you could do some, it has some wonderful shops if you're into shopping. But again, you, and you can actually climb in, on into this uh, kind of, uh, I, I almost, it almost looks to me almost like the Arco Triomphe of, 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 in France, but it's, you know, or, or a um, uh, Colosseum type piece. And you can actually go in it, I did, and, you know, experience the, the, the history that's there. But one of the things that we do when we are in Trier, right, is we go visit the American cemetery that's there in Trier area. And it's quite moving. That's where Peyton, Peyton, not Peyton, I'm sorry, Patton was, was buried. And you get a history of WW2 with uh, Entrier as well. So, uh, I was quite fascinated and, with the history that all took place in this whole region. And the, of course, the American cemetery was quite moving. And then we're in Coco. And what's Kokum known? I mean, known for is the mustard, of course. Now, one of the things, kind of an insider tip I'm gonna give you guys, no matter what river you're on, no matter where you go, what I always do is I take my suitcase, I line it in bubble wrap, put my clothes in, fold over the bubble wrap and throw in some tape, whether it be masking tape, duct tape, whatever you wanna use. Because I'm gonna, I'm gonna buy, you know, um, Coca mustard, or I am going to buy a bottle of wine or some beer to bring home, a souvenir, a coffee cup, whatever it happens to be. And I wrap it in my, my bubble wrap, tape it up, and throw it back in my suitcase, and it stays. So it's just kind of an insider tip. But with this, in Coca, you can do a couple, we'll give you a couple of options here <laughs> that are, I should say, choices. Uh, one, you could do a bike tour all the way up to the castle. Okay. You can do the bus ride and get the tour of the castle. We will do some wine tasting. We will also do some culinary. So you'll get a, a little bit of a taste of the coca mustard. And then you will also get a city tour. So again, opportunities. And look at those beautiful vineyards that, that you can see. Oh my goodness. I want to be there. And of course, you've got the wine. And they are known for the Rieslings. And one of the things that I discovered the last time I was in this region was because we serve the wines on, the wines on board, right? Uh, but I discovered that there is a magnificent dry Riesling. I'm not into sweet wines. So I was kind of, mm, I don't know if I want to do, I was talking to one of the, um, uh, the, vin the owners of one of the vineyards and he said, ah, oh, you have to taste this. I did, and it's delicious. I love the dry Rieslings, right? And we do serve this on board because, you know, for lunch and for dinner, you have unlimited free-flowing beer, wine, and soda, right? 
and the wines are regional. They're red and white. They're changed on a nightly basis. So you have some tastings of your own. And I highly recommend that you take a picture of that bottle that's being served to you on that particular night, especially if you like it, all right? Because you know, it's not served the next night, but say on, if it's served on Monday and on Wednesday, you want, really wanna try that wine again, just talk to the waiter. You know, we have some, don't worry. But, and, and again, you know, you have some choices of, of the regional wines. And as I said, wine tasting, you'll meet these owners. You'll find out how they produce their wines and how old these vineyards are and these states are. So, oops, I'm sorry. So again, we have some beautiful itineraries that you can choose from on the Rhine and the Moselle. It's 11 nights, the fairy tales, the delights. And then of course, you've got the, the rivers and the castles. It's a seven night on the Rhine, or you could either start in Amsterdam. Um, and this one actually touches on all three. I love this itinerary, okay? Again, and with that, we have, oops, a pre, you, we offer you pre and post, as I mentioned, one of the options is Lake Como. So if you're going to do, say the Rhine castles in Swiss Alps, right? And you wanna do a pre, cause you're gonna start in Basel, you fly into Milan, go to Lake Como. It's only about 45 minutes to an hour from Milan and then you're in Lake Como for three nights. We give you a beautiful, uh, not only a city tour, but we also give you a, a, a boat tour of Lake Como, okay? And all of our pre and the posts, you have your hotel stays, you have your breakfast with, uh, included every single day, as well as your, as your tours, okay? Your lunch and your dinner are on your own. And you want to experience the, the the culinary of the region that you're in. Absolutely. So, and of course, as I mentioned, we have bicycles. Every single one of our ships, except on the Doro and in Vietnam on the Mekong, have 26 bicycles. And you know, these bike paths run all along the rivers. So, if you don't want to be part of a bike tour that we offer that may be going three, five, 10, 15 miles, uh, and which are I have to tell you, it's a lot of fun because, you know, we stop in the cities or the towns and we stop for coffee or we stop for some beer or some wine and maybe a pastry, okay, um, or a sausage uh, and then continue. Or you could just take the bike out yourself and toodle and come back whenever you'd like, right? We also do fitness because we have a wellness coordinator on every single one of our ships. Um, we do yoga, tai chi, aerobics on this beautiful sun deck in the morning. And if the weather isn't conducive, we move all the furniture in our lounge area and we do it there. But all of our ships also have a fitness center. So we do fitness classes that you can sign up for, or you could just keep on your routine and go down to the fitness center and be on the treadmill or the bike or whatever, you know? So Again, and if you want to continue a routine that you get started while you're on board, our wellness coordinators can work with you on that. All right. So we are really into healthy living. And talk about food. Well, everything is fresh. Nothing is frozen on our ships except for our ice creams, right? And we get that from a Belgian dairy, but we make everything. Uh, that is one of the things that is so strict with Rudy, Christine, and Gary. They do not want anything frozen on our ships. So everything's made on board. Our breads, our desserts are spectacular. Uh, and as I mentioned earlier, the wines, right? But with breakfast and lunch prior to COVID, we had beautiful buffets. Unfortunately, uh, the buffets are gone. We always had menus on the table, but what we're doing now, instead of the buffets, we're doing kind of what we call action stations. So, you know, we for breakfast, we'll have our egg, 
uh, eggs action station. So you can order whatever you would like for your eggs or whatever you'd like from the menu, right? But we will still offer our sparkling wine. Now you're on holiday. So if you want to start your day off with a mimosa, please do so. It is complimentary, right? Lunch, the action stations might be a pasta station, a sushi station. You know, they may be changed off um, every, every day. And then upstairs in our lounge area, we will have our burger and brat stations. So if you want to experience that, okay? Dinner is, has always been menu driven. And three items on the menu, but we've always offered the filet, the uh, salmon, as well as chicken breast with a Caesar salad, and of course, our French fries. I don't care whatever meal you're at, order the French fries. They're delicious. Can't wait to be on our ship. <laughs> um, if you have a dietary need, uh, we, or I should say restriction, um, please tell your advisor at Market Square and make, we will make note of it and we can accommodate everything but kosher. And, um, so again, we also have a sip and sale. An hour before dinner, we have an open bar. So my, my bartenders will have a specialty drink of the night, but again, you can have whatever you would like. It is an open bar, right? And one night on every single one of our journeys, you will ex experience a Shen dinner. And, you know, Shen was an, um, an association that was founded back in the 12th century, um, was extremely popular throughout, especially France. Um, went dormant for a long time, came back in the 50s, and is very, very popular these days. Um, and Rudy Schneider was uh, inducted into Shen back in 2010. So he wants you to experience what a Shen dinner is. It's delightful, so delicious. Now, we also have a chef's table, alternative dining for you in the evening. There is no upcharge for you to have dinner there. All you have to do is go to the front desk and say, I'd like to have dinner there Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday and make, make your reservation, okay? This, it's smaller. So if you're on, our, if you're on a, one of our Rhine uh, ships, which are our twin balconies, you will ex have anywhere between 24 and 28 passengers and the chef's table. It's five courses, wine paired, uh, it's delicious, and as you can see, the chef cooks the meal in front of you. Okay. We do have a solo traveler promotion that's going on right now. So we've always had solo traveler since, oh, I'd say 2014 when we started this. So it was always 25% of the category D and E double rate. Now, 25% until February 20. Eighth, a balcony cabins. So you can have a cabin with a twin balcony with a veranda or just the regular French balcony if you so desire. But it does end February 28th. We do offer a travel waiver plus policy. That is a cancel for any reason for any sailing in 21 or 22, right? Um, it's additional so that if you are, if your advisor with uh, Market Square is offering our insurance, which is Travel Guard, um, it's the additional $80 per person. If they are offering a th other third party travel insurance, which I highly recommend that you take insurance, travel insurance, and I'm sure Ted will agree with me, um, it's an additional $175 per person. But it gives you cancel for any reason up to 24 hours prior to departure, okay? Now, since you were part of this wonderful journey on the Rhine, the Mine, and the Mosul, if you deposit and book any 2021 wow. or 22 Ama Waterways journey with Market Square, here's your advisor there by February 24th, 2021, I will put an additional $100 per person discount on your invoice. 
This is over and above any other specials that we are offering or anything else. Okay, now, but it also, we are doing, because we are partners with Market Square and Travel Leaders, okay? We are also offering to Travel Leaders our WAVE programs offer. And that is valid until February 15th, okay? And it's an additional $100 onboard credit for statement, so $50 per person, okay? So again, that's, that's about $150 per person, okay, that you're working on, and it does work with. Ted is doing the captivating ride from Am Amsterdam to Basel in May of next year. She's got fabulous dates. I mean, May 26th to June 2nd, you can't beat it, all right? And he's got it, um, um, space on the captivating ride journey. So you're going to experience the Rhine River going into all the cities that we talked about, okay? And Ted, if you'd like to talk a little bit about this, please be my guest. Yeah, thanks. <clears throat> thanks, Mary Margaret. I'll pop my video back on so folks can see me. But yeah, I'm going to be personally hosting a cruise down the Rhine River in May of 2022. And we'll start in Amsterdam, uh, make our way south through the Rhine Gorge and Strasbourg to Basel. And then we're going to continue down to Lake Como. And in Amsterdam, we will have the opportunity to go discover the Floriad and um, we'll actually have a full afternoon there, so plenty of time to do that. Um, the dates for the cruise are May 26th through June 2nd. And when we send out the follow to you after this webinar, we'll have more information on that. Um, but we certainly love to have you join me. I'd love to have you join me on a hosted cruise on the Rhine as well. All right, now we have I want to thank you very, very much for your, your attention, for your, and if you have any questions, please unmute yourself and let's, I'd be happy to answer them. So I think they have to ask the questions in the chat, but if you have questions, um, oh. please type them in the chat or please type them in the Q&A. Say, Mary Margaret, could you pop up that uh, uh, map of the Rhine again that you had back on one of your earlier slides? Oh, of course. But it might just be kind of helpful to give folks a little perspective on kind of where um, where these two rivers go. Three so, rivers. <laughs> All right. There's the entire map. Yeah. yeah. So you can see the Rhine kind of runs north south from Amsterdam down through Basel. And then the Moselle and the Main kind of run east and west. So you have this kind of an X in there. Um, and so both of those are seven night itineraries, right, Mary Margaret? You can do either yes. one seven nights. Yes. They run in either direction. Yes. Yeah. I mean, we also, you know, we have the captivating Rhine, which starts in Amsterdam, and then we have the enchanted Rhine that starts in Basel. And then, of course, we have the Rhine castles and Swiss Alps that will start in either direction. Yes. So I know that one of the, the number one questions that I get asked about river cruising, and I'm sure you get asked this, is um, which is your favorite river cruise? What do you recommend for people who've oh. never taken a river cruise before? And so I always answer it by saying it's like picking which of your children you love the most. <laughs> you right. know, they're and, and, and all special in their own, yes. own way. Um, um, I think... No, the, if, the if, most popular. Go ahead. No, I was I was going to say one of the things that I one of my I mean my very first river cruise of course was in France, but I would have to say I took my mom uh, many years ago on what what we now call the Rhine castles in Swiss Alps, and it was such a beautiful itinerary um, because it gave her a taste of. These, the beautiful cities along the Rhine and, and in France, you know, visiting Strasbourg. Strasbourg is such a beautiful city. Um, so again, I think that was, and my mother just loved it. And it was her, you know, and she always said to me, I can't, I can't go on a cruise. I can't go on a cruise. And I said to her, why? And she said, because I get seasick. And I kind of laughed and I said, mom, you're going to have to look out the window to make sure you're moving. So no, she thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it so much. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the Rhine 
Cruising is certainly popular for people who have never river cruised before. It's a great, it's a great starting point. The Danube is another great starting point. But I really would encourage people to think about the Moselle and the mine because they are a little more off the path and you get a little different experience um, than on the more popular cruises. So they're all they're all really worth considering. And you know, the great thing about river cruises is that once you go, you'll be back for more. It's um, yep. it's kind of a kind of be, can become an addiction with folks, and you can you know, discover so much of Europe by by sailing through the heart of it on a river cruise. So, and one of the things that we I don't are see offering... any questions in the chat. Okay, I'll just make one more comment. And if you're trying to decide what you would like to do, and you have the time to spend more than one, a, do a seven night cruise, we are offering a. A 10% discount on back to backs. So you can do the, the Rhine and the Danube. And, you know, Ted and any of the wonderful advisors at Market Square uh, can put this together for you uh, so that, you know, you do say you start with the Rhine, then you could go to the Danube or vice versa, depending upon where you're going to fly into. Um, and on your second cruise, we do give you a 10% discount plus you will get your past passenger discount, which is $100 per person. So um, think about it if you, you know, because it's the flight over there is, is just, you know, it's eight hours. So yeah. Yeah, well, think, think about, about all the vacations we've missed. We've missed this year, you know, it's a perfect chance yeah. to uh, use up some more, use up some more travel time and, and spend a little bit more time in a destination. So just so folks know, um, we here at Travel Leaders are able to book AMA Waterways Cruises in 2021, and their 2022 and 2023 seasons are also available for booking. And you know, one thing I think that folks in the general public might not be aware of is that space on those 2022 sailings is already becoming sparse. And you know, we didn't have river cruises this year for the most part. And you know we're not going to have them this spring, and so all those folks have pushed their trips back into 2022 and 2023, and so um, you know I like to say that the smart money is planning and locking in that space now so that you have it for 2022 and 2023. So with that, I don't see any other questions in the chat box. Um, we will follow up with you by email and just um, send you a recap of what we talked about and some information on some of the. Uh, promotions that are currently available in the marketplace. And if you have questions about river cruising in Europe, please feel free to reach out to me or to your travel advisor here at Travel Leaders, and we'd be happy to um, answer your questions and help you plan your river cruise. So Mary Margaret, thank you again for doing this. And, oh, um, thanks, my pleasure. Down in, down in Chicago. I hope it, you know, <laughs> you're having the same thing we are now, so hopefully you'll get above zero sometime in the not too distant future. I think maybe next Monday or Tuesday. <laughs> yeah, to look forward to, yeah, so thanks everybody for joining us. We appreciate it. And um, we will see you at our next webinar. Take care, bye. Thank you, bye-bye.